Welcome back everyone to our Let's Play series of transports. So before we get going with today's videos, let's take a brief moment and just sort of look at where we are and what we've done so far. Our money is doing great. We're at 8.8 .8 million. Um, I've just started the game up and of course I'm playing on fast forward as much as possible. And so 8.8 .8 million, we're doing great on our money. We've done a lot of things with trucks. You can see here we're uh, moving waste around, which is not the most um, profit field activity that we can do, but we're trying to do a lot of different things and just show some different aspects of the game. And I've already mentioned that one of the things I can't wait to get into is going to be airports because I want to get some planes moving around here. Let's start moving some passengers and some mail, uh, particularly from airport to airport and city to city. So in preparation from, from that, we have been uh, getting some buses going and increasing our reputation with the different cities around. All right, so you can see our status here is excellent, and that has lowered the cost of a flight license with this particular city to $4 million. That's what we want because it was much more expensive before and really cost prohibitive to us doing that. So let's take a quick look at our vehicles, and you can see here, under the trucks and buses, we're doing great here. We are on the number you see in parentheses is the sort of the maximum age for the vehicle before it needs to be phased out and replaced. So it's 15 years for these trucks and we're on year eight. Okay, and as we scroll down, you can see some of these are not quite as old, but it's 15 years for all of them. Then we go into our trains and you can see the huge amount of money that we're making on our trains. Unfortunately, you can see the 20 in parentheses for 20 year uh, lifespan. But we can't really see how many years we've had them because there's some jumbled up stuff and we can't really resize this window. So we don't really know how old our trains are, uh, not without going into them individually and taking a look. But we're not going to worry about that so much for right now. And of course, we have no planes and we have three ships, but they're all showing negative because they're not doing direct deliveries to an industry. They're an intermediary for us. So we have to absorb that cost in our case, into the profit that we're making from the trains. So that's where we are so far, but we want to get to planes. Okay, and we've got some options with the planes. I've talked about different locations that I could put an airport, you know, like right here in the center, but I've decided I don't really want to do that. And the reason I don't want to do that is I'm not sure exactly how it would interact with both cities, and I really don't want to combine these two cities for those purposes anyway. I want to keep them separate because that means ultimately more airports that we can use on the map and the more airports the more potential money we can make and so on but when we're looking at airports we've already seen the huge cost involved is getting the flight license from each city okay but when we look at building airports we need to determine what size airport we want to build so obviously there's the initial cost up front the suburban airport the smallest of the four available would be a hundred thousand up front which is minuscule amounts of money for us but then it costs 10,000 uh, per month in upkeep. And you see the station capacity is 500. Now, what does that 500 mean? Well, it's the same as what we've been dealing with in all of the other stations as far as capacity. But right now, we really don't know what that means for us. I can tell you what I've been doing in my sort of the free play modes that I've been doing. Uh, I've just simply been using the international airport, not because I needed all of the space and everything, but simply because I could, because it was the most fun. It's the biggest one. But I don't think we actually need that. If we take a look at the suburban one, let's see what happens if we, we're not going to actually put this down, but you can see that it has two outlets, okay? Uh, two places for loading and unloading, and they're right here next to, I can't really move around the cursor a whole lot, but we have two of them. And they are between the tower and our sort of our depot here. So there are two of those available. If I move up to the next size, you can see that there are three available. Next size up, we're still at three available. But again, we keep getting bigger until finally you get to the biggest one. And it has, what is that? One, two, well, the terrain is going to clip us here. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, I believe there. So uh, quite a few more there. And that's generally why I use it. It's the biggest one and it enables me to run the most planes through there that I want to. But it's not necessarily needed. It's more of a, a fun factor. So what do we want to do here? Well, 
one of the reasons I've had the game still going while we were talking is because I wanted the money to continue to increase. Now we've got the money to get going. So what do we want to do first? Well, I'm thinking what we want to do is Forge Hammer, which by the way is a great name for a city. And I want to go over here to, where is it at? There it is, to Orton. And we're going to put airports in each of these locations. And that, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. And of course, it's going to enable us to make quite a bit of money. So the question becomes, all right, where do we want to place these? Let's go ahead and we're going to pause the game for just a moment. So let's build the airports. I'm going to actually build a big city airport. I don't think we're going to need uh, this humongous airport, so we're not going to go with it, at least not uh, for now. Now, we could put it, the best location looks to be here. This is a pretty flat area. There's another flat area up here. Uh, and if you look at where the city is growing, it seems to be growing down this way pretty good as well. So I think what I'm going to do is put it right over here. Okay, so we're going to put one down right there, and then we're going to come right back to where we were. And let's look for a spot over here. Again, we're looking for a flat area to, just to keep things simple. And, okay, I like, that's pretty good placement, I think. Uh, let's try to do a little bit of terrain work right there. And I think that will actually help us out uh, with this. Let's go... So we're going to have 2,000 station capacity. Yeah, so that'll get us where we need to be. So there's our two airports that are put down. But remember, before we can do any flying, we need to purchase some licenses. So let's go into Forge Hammer. And again, our status is excellent. So that makes this as cheap as it possibly can be. We're going to purchase $4 million. Oh, wait, you have already bought a, fl a flight license. Really? I don't remember doing that. Did we do that in one of the previous videos and I forgot? Let's see. What about here? Okay, so we had not purchased one here. So, wow, that this is going to be even cheaper than I thought because I don't remember purchasing a flight license there before, but apparently at some point we did or it's a glitch. Either way, we've got a flight license for each city, which means that we can now begin flying. All right, so let's come back down to this airport. We've got a depot built in, and let's see what's available for us. So we've got one passenger aircraft, and if we click on it, you can see it's 3100 per month. It can carry five tons of mail and 30 passengers, okay? So we want both of those. We want to carry mail and passengers. So let's look for a mail plane. Well, I don't really see one. If you see, we've got goods, luxury goods, semi-luxury food, and then regular food and waste. So that's interesting. But if we click on goods, you can see that in addition to carrying 30 tons of goods, it also can carry 30 tons of mail. Luxury, nope, no such luck. Same thing with the rest of these. They only carry what they're specifically listed for, but the goods cargo plane can indeed carry Quite a bit of mail so that's what we're going to be interested in so we've got a passenger aircraft here that can carry a little bit of mail and also 30 passengers and then we're going to be looking at the goods planes which can carry 30 tons of goods but we're not really interested in that right now what we're interested in is the 30 tons of mail again we're going to have some fun with this thing so the first thing we want to go ahead and get set up with is a passenger aircraft so we're going to go ahead and buy that so you can see 44,000 and let's go ahead and back out and we're going to set up the flight plan. All right, let's get these windows out of the way, go under schedule, add a stop. So this is going to work exactly like what we're used to with the trucks and the trains and all of that. All right, here we go. There's our other stop. So we're going to go simple point A to point B, load and unload with passengers and a little bit of mail. Okay, let's close that out temporarily. And then now that we've got that, of course, we won't have any trailers on this one uh, like we're used to with the trucks and uh, the trains. But now we're going to copy this and we're going to start out with two of these. Okay, so let's go ahead, information. And what I want to do is 
get this one started. So let's get our time back going again. And you can see he's going to run over here, try to pick up anything. But of course, the first time through, it never picks up anything. So what we're waiting on in order to set this second one loose is I'm waiting for this guy to get here because I want to try to spread these out a little bit. All right, so we're going to wait for this guy to appear in our screen, and there he comes. You can see right there. So we're going to pull up the next one and enable that. There we go. So now we're going to have, we're going to keep highlighted, and once again, you can see one of the three locations, and there's nothing there. Okay, if we watch for stored commodities, still nothing there. Okay, so we need to figure out why. Otherwise, we're just going to have uh, planes running around. Let's see, where are we here? We didn't go quite down far enough. Okay, but you can see that right now the mail is, and the passengers are starting to pour in. So here comes our first plane back. And let's see how they fill up. And there you go, 30 passengers, 5 tons of mail. You can see the passengers start to fill back in. Okay, so we know that this airport is working exactly the way we want. All right, what about this airport? Now it's starting to fill in. Okay, it takes it a little while, but now it's starting to fill in with mail and passengers. So remember, we have 30 passengers max. Here comes our other plane. And it looks like we have a good number of passenger planes because if you notice, we've got just enough as these guys make it back and forth to fill them up. And that's what we want. We don't want them running around uh, at too much less than full capacity, if at all possible. But if you notice, we've got some more room here. I mentioned that we can carry a little bit of mail, but not a ton. All right, speaking of which, we got 40 passengers ready to go. Here comes our other plane. He's going to pick up 30 of them. So we're doing pretty good on passengers. This is probably the most passenger planes I want. Okay, but look at all of this mail we've got. And we noticed we also had the same thing when we were down at the other city. So now I want to take advantage of this particular business. So we've got 175 of the mail. Let's come back into our depot now and buy. We want to buy a goods plane. I really wish we had a dedicated mail plane that could carry uh, more and so I wish you could carry like 60 tons of mail instead of being divided up. But hey, we'll go with what we've got. The reliability age is 15 years. So let's go ahead and buy a cargo plane. We'll see it shows up in our depot screen. Let's go ahead and back out a little bit because we want to set up our schedule. All right, so let's add a stop. We want to go from... Orton to down here to Forge Hammer. There we go. So now we've got that set up. And so what do we want to do? Well, it can carry 30 tons, but if you notice with these 169, so we got a lot. A lot is available. So what we're going to do is let's get back out of that again. Is I'm going to start out with three. So we're going to copy this one a couple of times. Again, we've got plenty of money, so there's no issue there. And then what we're going to do is let's pull back up the first one and get it started. Okay, and we're going to come right back over here to our other location. And there we go. So now we're, it's going to head out. It's going to pick up the 30 tons of mail, and it's going to be off and running. But we already know 30 tons doesn't really do a whole lot to curtail uh, the demand here. It doesn't really do that. So we're going to go ahead and get our second one started. And then we're going to wait and see when we have one of the planes pop into the view, our first one. There we go. And we'll start our third one going. Okay, so you can see already two of these three are in use. So again, as I mentioned, one of the reasons why I generally, just for the fun of it, will pick the International Airport, even though it is a lot more expensive. It is three times the cost up front of the next in line, the big city airport, 
But the reason I generally do it is because it has so many loading and unloading slots on there that I never have to worry about overloading and causing planes to sit and wait. So right now you can see we've got two coming in and we've got three spots available. So it's not really that big of a deal so far. But if I continue adding a lot more planes, then it will be. All right, so let's go ahead. We've got a steady flow of planes, usually two at a time within pretty short succession of each other. But you can see the mail is still, even though we just took some mail for a passenger plane, now we've got our second cargo plane coming in. It is very quickly adding up. Now, the good thing for us is our capacity, 2,000. Well, you can see we're nowhere near 2,000. That is not even close to being an issue. So what I want to do now is you can see this number is very rarely going down very much at all. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and pause things a little bit. Oh, wait, do we have two cargo planes coming in at the same time? Yes, we do, actually. Okay, just to try to spread things out a little bit here. Where are we? There we are. Okay, so we got 142 mail there, 165 mail here. Uh, nowhere near capacity, so the no issues there. But we just need more planes. All right, so let's go under. Let's see. Let's get out of there. And I am going to pick up two more planes. Again, we're going to get very close to filling these areas up. And if that's what happens, then so be it. We'll deal with that. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be that huge of an issue. But like I said, if it becomes a huge issue, then we will definitely deal with it at that time. All right, let's go ahead and set up our, our schedule once again. Let's add a stop. The first stop is going to be here at Forge Hammer. And then we'll move our way over to Orton. There we go. And before we get that one started, we're going to go ahead and copy again. There we go. And you see, we have nobody here right now. So what I'm going to do is go back in. Let's start this one up. And then very shortly thereafter, I'm going to go ahead and start the other one as well. And you can see already there's 30 tons of mail for them to pick up. So we're just going to watch for just a moment here and see what happens. See if we get into any traffic jams. But so far, we're looking at generally only two showing up at one time. But I imagine that's probably going to change here shortly as we get the other two into the rotation. And the other thing I want to show is let's go ahead and keep it on planes. And you can see the money as it is racking up. And keep in mind, these are the entry level vehicles. As time passes, we're going to get into planes which have larger capacity, they can fly faster, and so on. All right, here's the first time we have three. You can see one was waiting here on the runway, but really not for very long. Didn't really cause much of an issue, if any. All right, now we've got three. You can see one's going to have to stop, but one is ready to come out, so it doesn't have to stay Yeah, I like this flow. Again, it's not going to always be quite this smooth, but I like this. This this looks good to me. This is probably as crowded as we would want to attempt to make it because you can see we've got all sorts of stuff going on, and the mail is finally down to a point where we're not going to be quite full on every one of our flights. And if we see that that continues and that ends up being a bad thing, then we'll get rid of one of our cargo planes. Now, every once in a while, one of the things you're going to notice is a bug that is in the game. And every once in a while, you'll see a plane, and I've noticed it more with the passenger planes than the cargo planes, but every once in a while, you'll get a passenger plane that will get sort of caught in a loop, and it will just sort of, it will take off from this airport and turn around and land at this airport again. That's a bug I've seen. Eventually it works itself out, but if you do happen to notice that, then that's what's going on. Okay, so far, yeah, we're noticing that it's a little bit. We're getting some loads here of mail that aren't quite full, but that's okay. 
we're still making, as you can see on the side here, we're still making tons and tons of money out of these airports. We're back up to $9 million. So yeah, nothing that I am particularly worried about. If anything, I would get rid of one of these. But look, so far this seems to be the least profitable one and it's made 60 grand. So <laughs> I'm not entitled to worry about it too terribly much. And you can see these guys are steadily clicking off $31,000, $32,000 uh, unloading every time they come in. So yeah, everything is looking great. A little bit of a respite here, which could mean a couple of things. Could mean we run into some issues over here. No, everything appears to be fine over here. The mail is definitely not taking a hit over here. Everything looks good. Passengers, same thing. And you notice that the two passenger aircraft, that's where the profit is. These guys are making huge profits because they are full on every destination they take. When they load and unload, they're full on passengers and the little bit of mail that they can take. So they're maximizing the amount of cargo that they can carry as opposed to our cargo planes, which are only carrying half of the cargo that they could. But still, we're over $10 million. So now we can look at yet another opportunity. Okay, so let's go in, let's get out of that. Let's go into our cities. So we know Orton, we're already doing business with. Forge Hammer, these are the two locations that we're using currently. Now, Panboro, well, that's our other big city that is close by to Forge Hammer. So we know we're already doing great there. Status is excellent. And flight license is $4 million. We go ahead and purchase that. It brings us down to $6 million, But we know we've got that taken care of. All right, the next biggest city would be, looks like Malton. Okay, we're not doing business over here. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Again, I'm going to leave things going because we're just making money hand over fist at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to set down a depot. And I'm going to do it. Let's go ahead and just put it out here on the outskirts. And let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing. Okay, that'll work right there. It'll connect there to the edge of the road. All right, now it's time to set up our bus stops. And let's see, where are we going to put our first one? How about right there? There's two. And the hardest thing for me is remembering where I've put these things. And again, why are we doing this? And this is to upgrade our reputation. Let's see there. Um, and I think that's going to be good. That should be enough. Okay, let's go ahead. And I don't remember all the places I just put those. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Now, we have a, an upgraded bus. So this bus became available in 1957. And it can carry 25 passengers as opposed to 16. And instead of 1700 per month, it costs 2300 So, okay, no big deal there. Uh, both of these are 15 on the number of years for their reliability age. So let's go ahead and get the, the better bus that can carry more passengers. So we're going to do one to start out with. And information. All right, let's get this back out of the way as well. And let's start adding stops. All right, so we got one and two three, four. All right, where did I put, did I not put any down there? Five, six, seven, eight, and I think that's all of them. Okay, no wait, there's nine. Okay, so, okay, not terrible, but definitely not the best job I've ever done with those. All right, so let's get out of that. And what I want to do is let's go ahead and get a total of three here. Okay, now we bring back up our first one and get that one enabled. And again, the first time it goes through all of these, 
stops. It will not find any passengers. Okay, let's start the second one now. Again, trying to get them spread out a little bit, but I'm not going to be too terribly worried about it because their job is very simple, and that is to establish... Again, you can see $10 million is what it would cost us right now for a flight license, but we've established a relationship, and then from here, we're going to increase that to good, and then finally, excellent. That's what we're after. Okay, so that's Malton. And then let's go to the next in line. Let's see, okay, we're not doing any business here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. And we'll start out with a depot somewhere. Let's see, where is the opening for this thing? There we go. We'll put it right there. And now let's, whoops, wrong one. Let's put down some bus stops. Uh, let's see, let's start with one right there. Then a second one there. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. And the roads are kind of crazy around here. This one doesn't connect at all. Uh, there we go. That'll be good. And that should be fine for what we need. And again, we're going to go with the newer bus. You can see we've also got a newer truck that just popped in. It's actually on the side here. we got to get rid of some of these. But you can see a new truck has popped in as well. And that will continue as time passes. We'll get newer models. And that is good news for us. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And where did I put the other one? Or did I put another one? I may not have put them anymore. Okay, I thought I had one more down here at the bottom, but apparently not. Okay, so we'll go with that. But first we need to, we'll get three of these. That might actually be too many for what we have set up, but we're going to go with it. I don't think it's going to lose money either way. Okay, let's get our second one going. And then we'll come in and get our third one going here shortly. You can see I sort of picked those a little bit out of order based on how the layout is of the city. And we hear the cha-ching of the money being made. So let's head back over to Capperby or Carperby. Looks like, oops, not that one, Malton. And let's see how we're doing over here. Okay, relationship is good and we see that that gets us down to 7.5 million. All right, so we're not quite ready for our next round of uh, airports just yet. So let's head back over here and see what we've got going on. Let's pick out one of our, again, you can see these airplanes are doing great. This is a cargo plane and it's made a profit of 230,000 in basically half the year. So we're doing great. And that brings us to one of the things that I find really interesting about this game, and I hope that they add more features like this in the future, uh, either through the official game or through mods, once we get to that point where the Steam Workshop has been released, which I believe is supposed to be fairly soon. Uh, I know it's listed under the upcoming features, so hopefully we'll get there pretty soon. So if we come back to our vehicles page, we were looking at this earlier. And you can see we're getting there on the age. So 15 years is really where we want to swap these out. And we're up to 10 years on some of our oldest models. Okay, trains, again, we can't really see anything here uh, because of this. Uh, but then same thing happens under planes. Ships are okay right now. We're, we're perfectly fine on ships. We're nowhere near their maximum age where they need to be replaced. 
But we come to the idea of, okay, how much micromanagement do you really want when you're dealing with the game? Now, some people, if you're the type of person that wants to manage literally every aspect of the game, then I completely understand that. And that's, I can see where that would be fun. For me, however, I would prefer to have this done automatically. Swap out these planes and trains and so on whenever they get to uh, the maximum age. And I would prefer that to be done for me. Well, it just so happens that there is a way in the game right now that will do that for us. And it is located up here under Show Manager. Right now we have one manager and it's called a Vehicle Manager. And it renews vehicles that are outdated. Look at how much this thing costs. 50000 per month. So that is going to be extremely expensive on an annual basis. However, we're not going to worry about the money. We're making tons of money and I'm going to go ahead and activate this. So we're not quite to the point where we need it yet. So I'm a little early on this, but I want to go ahead and get that done because I wanted to go ahead and point it out in today's video. And also because I don't, I want to make sure that I get this done before we get to the actual year where this is going to need to start happening. So again, we're wasting money by doing it quite this early, but I, I wanted to show it off for the purposes of our, uh, our series. I wanted to go ahead and show that at this point before we get lost in adding additional airports and so on. But right now, we're in great shape. $12.5 million. We've added our first airports in today's video. Let's go ahead and take this moment you can see we've gotten some updated cargo planes for each of the different types. We've also got updated, let's see, that's another cargo plane. We've got, there we go, there's our updated truck to carry more goods. So all of that will happen. And what will happen is as these uh, come due and are ready to be replaced, the vehicle manager will replace them with the newest version available, the newest model that we have available. So if we come into our depot, you see that we still only have one passenger aircraft, and I'm trying to remember when the upgraded passenger aircraft comes in. I can't remember off the top of my head. But now you can see that we do have upgraded cargo planes. And of course, the number out to the end designates the year when it becomes available. So these, our existing cargo planes will become available and start to be used and swapped out uh, as, as the old ones reach that level. So you can see the speed is where you can get a lot of upgrade here. Let's go ahead and click on one of these cargo planes and you can actually see the speed up here on the window, it is going, what is that? Oh, we already got a 59, an FFG 59. So it looks like we've already got, interesting. So apparently those have been out there for a while, so we don't have upgraded ones. Okay, that's my bad on that one. I thought we had reached that point because I know it's coming, but, and I thought we had already gotten there, but apparently not quite yet. All right, so we're making tons of money and I'm pretty thrilled with this because this is going to mean for us that as we keep an eye on our new cities that we are working with, let's go ahead and jump over, see what our status is. Very good. Excellent. That's getting that money back down there. And then over to Malton. These guys are going to be ready very soon. There we go. Malton is already ready for um, it's airport. So what we'll do is we'll come back in our next video and we'll continue building more airports and more planes and we will continue our assault on the economy here in this game. So for now, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more of our Let's Play of Transports.